Ahead of the November 8th general election, the governor and a Republican senator both agreed to a gubernatorial debate. With the midterm elections just a month away, the debate will be the first between the two candidates. Republican Senator Brian Daly agreed on Monday to a debate with incumbent Governor Gavin Newsom on October 23rd to be aired via radio, live video stream, and television rebroadcast. They're both eyeing the position to govern California. Newsom has served as governor since 2019 and accepted the debate invitation in September. As your governor, I promise you, whatever challenges come our way, I will always lead the California way. Daly has served the California State Senate for the 1st District also since 2019. I'm running for governor of California. This is about the future of our children, mine and yours. They deserve the opportunity to thrive in the Golden State. Polling from the Public Policy Institute in August showed Newsom with a lead of 58 percent and Daly with 31 percent. A UC Berkeley poll from September showed a margin of 53 percent to 32 percent. Sacramento local public broadcasting station KQED will host the event. According to the station, two of their journalists will moderate the debate. They will, quote, question the candidates in conversational format without strict time limits on answers. The debate will be aired at 1 p.m. on radio and live streaming, with a rebroadcast on television at 6 p.m. Questions for the debate can be submitted on KQED's website. Just last week, doctors and lawyers alike all gathered on the steps of the California Capitol building to call on the governor to veto a medical misinformation bill. He ended up signing it just hours later. Two doctors have now filed a federal lawsuit. Entity News spoke with one of their attorneys representing the case. California is trying to shut down doctors' free speech. That's according to the lead lawyer who is representing two doctors and suing the state. What California is trying to do is shut down uh, doctors' free speech. It's trying to prevent doctors from giving us what they believe is the best medical advice. Instead, California is trying to force a scientific consensus, so-called, on doctors and limit the information that doctors can provide their patients. Daniel Sir, a managing attorney for the Liberty Justice Center, filed a federal lawsuit on October 4th for Dr. Jeff Barkey and Dr. Mark McDonald. The lawsuit is against the Medical Misinformation Bill, officially known as Assembly Bill 2098, which Governor Gavin Newsom signed into law at the end of September. Sir says the law is unconstitutional. We're asking a federal judge uh, to give us expedited relief uh, to stop the Medical Board of California from enforcing this law against doctors, to protect doctors' free speech rights, to protect patients' rights to receive this medical information, this medical advice from their doctors, uh, so that this unconstitutional law doesn't go into force. The suit filed in Central California U.S. District Court is against the Medical Board of California and Attorney General Rob Bonta. Sir stresses that the United States was built on freedom of speech and that California is going to be the, quote, new battleground to protect our free speech rights. This case is about uh, not just these doctors, but all doctors. Uh, and this law is going to be um, affecting every doctor in their ability to provide uh, accurate medical advice, uh, what they believe is the best medical advice for their patients. A law that California passed uh, is on the front edge of this new, quote-unquote, fight against misinformation. After Newsom signed the bill, he released a message saying that he was concerned similar laws could have a, quote, chilling effect on doctors. But he was confident AB 2098 is narrow enough to apply only to, quote, those egregious instances where physicians are acting with what he described as malicious intent. But Sir says the government should remain neutral amongst citizen debates. This law instead favors only one side of the arguments. The 14th Amendment in the Equal Protection Clause, it says that government is going to be neutral uh, among citizens uh, when we have differing views in a debate. And the problem here is that California is coming in and trying to force one view on all doctors. It's 
Sir added that the government is continuously overstepping and going over its, quote, constitutionally appropriate role, and blocking that overstep wouldn't be possible without people standing up and taking legal action. I really appreciate that Dr. Barkey and Dr. McDonald have stepped up to participate in this lawsuit, to, to bring this case. Uh, we are only able to defend our constitutional rights and liberties uh, when we have people willing to step up and defend them in court. So it's sad that that's what it takes sometimes uh, to defend our rights and liberties, uh, but it's important that people stand up and fight back and go to court to protect their rights. Carlos Viatoro, a spokesperson for the medical board, said the agency does not comment on pending litigation. Attorney General Rob Bonta's office said as of October 4th, it had not yet been served. Los Angeles authorities announced on Wednesday the largest drug bust in its division's history. It's part of a larger effort to crack down on illegal drug trafficking. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA, Los Angeles Field Division and the Fontana Police Department busted about $33 million worth of drugs in Norco, California. Investigators saw an individual carrying boxes from a house to a vehicle in late September. They seized over 3,500 pounds of methamphetamine and 145 pounds of cocaine. This investigation into the drug trafficking organization is ongoing. Last week, the California governor signed a package of abortion-related bills into law. The laws are being met with controversy, including one bill that critics are calling infanticide. Entity spoke with a member of the Right to Life League regarding her opinions of the bills. Last Tuesday, Governor Gavin Newsom signed a total of 12 abortion-related bills into law. While many Democratic lawmakers are celebrating their success in passing some of the strongest pro-abortion laws in the nation, some critics are speaking out against them. Among those bills signed was AB 2223, which immunizes women and doctors from both criminal and civil liabilities. Critics of this bill say that this law is legalizing infanticide. Practically speaking, the way AB 2223 is going to work, because it, here's what it does. It decriminalizes or any, any investigation, any civil or criminal investigation into um, stillbirth, miscarriage, abortion, and perinatal death due to causes that occur in utero. Susan Swift, the vice president of legal affairs for the Right to Life League, told NTD that the bill lacks important definitions. One of those is for perinatal death and will not investigate any infant death up to 28 days if the mother consents. So if a baby is born alive and even despite a botched abortion, right, technically that baby should be allowed to live and, and be given immediate care. But AB 2223 goes a little farther because it's decriminalizing any investigation. It strips out the coroner's ability to investigate it. No longer is there a duty for the coroner to investigate it. Now it's just optional. So, so long as the mother is consenting, then there will be no investigation of how did the baby die. According to Newsom's office, while many Republican-led states move to ban abortion, he, Democrat-led California, quote, continues to lead the nation's fight. That fight is to decriminalize aspects of abortion and create more privacy around it. Newsom said an alarming number of states continue to outlaw abortion and criminalize women, and it's more important than ever to fight like hell for those who need these essential services. But Swift says that California is trying to push free abortions to mothers without providing an alternative to those who wish to keep their baby. If you're a young mother and you're kind of desperate in that in that zone, what you're going to experience is you're going to be pressured by California through all of the different programs that push abortion and offer you free services if you choose abortion. She continues on to say that she does not agree that abortion should even be considered a health care service. Health care is humanely delivering the child so as to save the life of the mother as well. And so both of them have a chance to live. And that's what's lost in this narrative because it's very successful. Abortion is health care. And that's a lie. It is not health care. The intent is to kill a human being. 
Another bill that was signed was AB 1242. This law is designed to block law enforcement and California corporations from cooperating with out-of-state entities regarding an abortion that happens in California. Additional bills in the package include expediting the licensing of abortion providers who move to California, providing grants to service providers who give free abortions in low-income areas, and setting up a fund to educate disproportionately affected communities about sexual health, including abortion care. A lot of them are are unconstitutional on their face, uh, like AB 1666, AB 2091, and AB 1242, because all three of them say, well, we, the state of California, we are not going to enforce uh, other judgments from other states that concern abortion. Despite the passage of these bills, she says that the Right to Life League will contest the legality of these laws. We are going to continue to educate people about the truth of abortion. We are going to continue to fight the bad laws in Sacramento. And we are going to continue to protect and shield the pro-life clinics and centers and maternity homes who are our members so that they can keep their doors open. Swift said her organization will continue supporting nonprofits that provide alternatives and aid to women who do not want to abort their baby.